We welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. In Minneapolis, the stars are out. Will Gino Oriema win a 12th title? Could it be title number two for Dawn Staley and the South Carolina program? Paige Beckers hoping to hoist up the championship trophy in her hometown. And Aaliyah Boston looking to complete the journey that came oh so close a season ago. Preconceptions cast more shadow than light. See only what you're told to see, and you'll miss so much of me. Open the doorway, where are rushing. Convention hides my depth and dimension. Alive and breathing. So save your stereotypes, standards, and tiny boxes. Hearts are being worse. I am authentic, unapologetic, driven without doubt, unique on my own. It's in her blood. Unstoppable together. A selfish play for the finish. There's no space we can't occupy, no promise we can't fulfill. Watch madness. We seek redemption. No! Leah Boston misses at the buzzer. We have a legacy to honor. And here, in plain sight, a fullest self, dreams laid bare, I am not scared to be seen. Just imagine. From monochrome to multidimensional, no longer defined by roles assigned. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's about winning basketball games. Projecting images of our design. We might as well just prove everybody wrong and prove ourselves right. We are the source of our own light. We're competing for a national championship. One goal for everyone. Watch us shine. No this is what we start together for. Something on the other side for us. Whatever you can imagine. It's all worth it. And then there were two. South Carolina and UConn will play for a national championship tonight at Target Center. As we welcome you courtside, hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. So happy to be with you this Sunday evening here on ESPN. Rebecca, South Carolina has been the number one team in the nation this entire season. They are led by the player of the year, Aaliyah Boston, and she is coming off yet another terrific performance. A monster performance against Louisville where she scored 23 points and had 18 boards. Simply, she is the most dominant player in women's college basketball. She uses her 6'5 frame to overpower defenders inside and has skill and a soft touch from the perimeter. She is an absolute beast on the offense boards, four or rebounds a game, a beast inside as well. And Ryan, an unselfish teammate, a player who can lead her team to a national title. You see the historic numbers in the semifinal against Louisville for Aaliyah Boston. Time to welcome in the other members of our broadcast team now, Holly Rowe and Andrea Carter. Andrea, while Aaliyah is the player of the season this year, last year it was Paige Beckers for UConn. Absolutely, Ryan, and what makes Paige Becker so special is her ability to create her own shot, and that ability shined in the semifinals against Stanford. She had 14 points, but had to work for it, craftiness with her dribble right into the mid-range. She had to play tough and play with physicality to finish in the lane, quick release over a high contest, and the only easy layup that Becker's got was after a great effort on the defensive end. These type of plays are what Paige Beckers has to do tonight. Quick, hard cuts, and then slowing down, reading the defense, but showing her elevation and soft touch on her shot. She'll need all of it against South Carolina. Paige Beckers' last two games. You see the numbers in the Elite Eight against NC State, and then very efficient in a win against Stanford. We also have two star coaches here tonight in Minneapolis. For more on that, let's check in with Holly. 
Well, Ryan, these aren't just coaches. These are two of the most iconic figures in all of sports, and they both came from very humble beginnings. Coach Gina Oriema came to this country as an immigrant from Italy on a boat at just seven years old, settling in Norristown, Philadelphia. He came from very humble things. He said, I've always been trying to prove people that I could be better. Don Staley, growing up a very similar place, 17 miles away, on the corner of Diamond and 25th Street in a housing project where she learned how to be tough. They both got their start in women's basketball at the University of Virginia. Different eras, but same feel. Then they led USA to three gold medals in the last three Olympic cycles, both as head coach, assistant, and Don Staley as the most recent head coach. While their paths may have been similar, their personalities couldn't be more different. But what they are is Philly tough. That's what they infuse into their team, and they are iconic. So cool that they're facing off against each other tonight. Pretty good for two kids from Philly. So many stars in the building. UConn, South Carolina. We'll have the starting lineups coming up next from Target Center. Decorated programs here in Minneapolis meeting for a championship tonight. You see Connecticut with the 11 national title. South Carolina trying to become the eighth school with multiple championships as we send things over to public address announcer Jamie Coffey. Please rise if able and remove your hats to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad. Tonight the flag is displayed on the court as being held by women community leaders from Minnesota and the colors are being presented by the University of Minnesota ROTC Joint Service Color Guard. And now please join recording artist Dana Cohen in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang Dana Cohen setting the stage for the national championship tonight in Minneapolis. Now, these two teams did meet earlier this season in the Bahamas. Started off strong for Connecticut, but it was South Carolina who had a dominant fourth quarter, Rebecca. Yeah, South Carolina was relentless on the offensive glass. They were able to turn Connecticut over in the game. 17 more field goal attempts. It's what led to that big push in the fourth. Saw Leah Boston doing her usual work. She's had great success against Connecticut in three prior matchups. And well, she's had great success against everybody in her collegiate career. Rebecca, how about just anything that is learned from that meeting or different here tonight? I think one of the things that's different, AZ Fudd was a young freshman then, only 10, 10 minutes, zero points. She's a little more experienced freshman now. All right, time to get to know UConn and their journey a little better. This year has been the hardest, most trying, most emotionally and physically exhausting season that I've ever experienced. And now there's concern for the best player on UConn. This is a Connecticut team that has watched one team hate after another, experience injury or illness, and miss games, 
know, there was one point where we were practicing with literally five people. And then there became a turning point where like, okay, you know, we're starting to get it. We got the ball rolling. Statement win for Connecticut. We're gonna play Connecticut basketball. And I couldn't say that a month ago. The national championship would mean everything. It makes it so much better when you had to go through a lot to get it. It's so much more rewarding. It is now time for the UConn starting lineups brought to you by Capital One. Here's Jamie Coffey. And now it's time to meet the starters for the UConn Huskies. At forward, a 6'3 sophomore from Ontario, Canada, number three, Aaliyah Edwards. At forward, a 6'5 senior. Number 13, Kristen Williams. And at guard, a 5'11 freshman from Arlington, Virginia. Number 35, AZ Bond. Ladies and gentlemen, the Yukon Huskies. Meanwhile, the South Carolina Gamecocks, they've had a familiar theme all season. We came here to Minnesota finish the job. Here's Boston. Too easy. Rejection from Bree Beal. South Carolina firmly in control. Over the past couple of years, the journey has had a lot of ups and downs. Thinking back to last year, buzzer shot at the Final Four. Didn't end the way we wanted to, but you know, we took that and we learned from it. We fought the last two years to get where we are today. We know we deserve it. We know we are a great team. We really all want it back. The South Carolina Gamecocks, they are headed to the national championship game. We closed the book of unfinished business by us hoisting that national championship trophy. Time to be the South Carolina starting lineup brought to you by Capital One. Here again is Jamie Coffey. And now it's time to meet the starters for the South Carolina Gamecocks. At four, a six-month junior from St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, number four, Aaliyah Boston. At four, a six-two senior out of Rome, Georgia, number five, Victoria Saxton. At guard, a five-nine junior from Toledo, Ohio. At guard, a 5'7 senior out of Fort Myers, Florida, number three, Destiny Henderson. And at guard, a 6'1 junior from Rock Island, Illinois, number 12, Bree Beal. The South Carolina Gamecocks. And introducing the head coaches for the UConn Huskies, The national championship gets underway in just 30 seconds here in Minneapolis. When we said 30 seconds, we meant 30 seconds. Here we go, South Carolina, UConn. A national championship on the line tonight in Minneapolis. Outstanding turnouts from both fan bases. This sellout crowd at Target Center. Connecticut seeking a 12th national title. South Carolina trying to become just the eighth school to win multiple national championships. This one would join their title back in 2017. Aaliyah Boston and this junior class for South Carolina feels like 
They've been robbed the last couple of seasons. Didn't have a tournament when they were the number one team in the nation two years ago. Last year came a put back away from heading to the national championship game. And this UConn team has shown incredible resilience all season long. Nelson Adota and Saxton jump it up. And the national title game is underway. Connecticut starting out in man-to-man -man defense. You would think South Carolina would look to establish Aaliyah Boston inside early. Here's Henderson instead. Couldn't swivel it in. Saxton corrals it. Henderson gets loose in the corner. Out of three. Destiny Henderson has a knack for these big moments. And South Carolina is the number one offensive rebounding team in the country. It's how they start the game. They had a big edge in that department in the first meeting between these teams. South Carolina was a plus 15 in second chance points in that contest. Williams looking to answer, cannot. Loose ball and it's grabbed by Cook. Off and running for the Gamecocks. Cook all the way in, able to lay it home. And when South Carolina's guards get going, that's always a good sign. What a great start for South Carolina on the perimeter. Getting some confidence early, a three, and then the breakout two. South Carolina's guards, much maligned early in the tournament, showed up in a huge way in the semifinal as Edwards goes in for Connecticut's first bucket. Here's Beal. Connecticut will play off her on the perimeter. Anderson, little bunny, no, another offensive rebound, but it's knocked out of bounds off of Saxton, Connecticut basketball. Great time to get an open look on the offensive, is on the offensive glass, heading out to three, up to the top, wide open. Destiny Henderson loves the corners, drains it from there. Henderson, a senior, ticketed for the WNBA. Draft will be Monday night on ESPN, April 11th. Edwards, nice denial from Saxton, fronting her, Cook collects it. Here's Beal. Beal, aggressive attack, flips it up wildly, but Boston is there. Boston denied, another chance, she'll flip it out. Plenty of time to operate for South Carolina. Henderson, trying to work Beckers. Henderson couldn't twist into anything. Boston, though, still there for the follow. And that is the relentlessness of South Carolina on the offensive glass. Aaliyah Boston in particular will pursue and pursue and pursue. She does not give up on the old boards. You see AZ Fudd in the starting lineup. She missed shoot around today with an illness. Is back in the hotel resting for Connecticut. Edwards will take. Back iron no and a good box out from Boston. Beal, bodies in, can't finish. Saxton fighting, another offensive rebound, and Beal finishes. That's five offensive rebounds already for South Carolina. That's why they have six more field goal attempts in this game. Connecticut getting manhandled inside. Here's Williams. Little mid-range, no. Rebound Cook, Carolina pushing it. Here's Zaya Cook, lost it off of her leg. No, last hit Connecticut, it'll stay with the Gamecocks. Relentless, that's what South Carolina is. They get the offensive rebound on 46% of their misses. That's how they're starting here. Connecticut needs an early timeout. Cook buries the jumper. Gino Ariema a bit bewildered. And South Carolina couldn't have scripted the start any better. Incredible start in the national championship game for South Carolina. An 11-2 lead, three and a half minutes into this one. Six missed shots, five of them. South Carolina's gotten the offensive rebound. They have seven second chance points as we check in with Holly Rowe. To that point, UConn coach Gino Oriema took his whiteboard that's made in the, in the form of a basketball court and he circled over and over and over around the paint and the basket with his finger and he told his team this is where the game will be run. If you guards are out at the three-point line when the ball goes up, we are not going to win this game. He wants them crashing to the glass when the ball goes up in the air. 
everybody has to crash. They're getting killed on the board. It's certainly going to be a team effort, Holly, because South Carolina is too big and strong in their pursuit of the offensive glass to just handle it with your own bigs. Foul here called against Cook. And that'll be our first whistle of the game. Up until that point, I feel like the officials have really let them play, and I think that's the way both coaches and both teams want it. Deckers has had a hard time getting the basketball back. Destiny Henderson has been denying big time. Now Beckers with Boston switched on her. Henderson gets back to Beckers. Beckers gives it up. Nelson Adota, good ball fake. Boston waiting. How about this South Carolina defense? Absolutely incredible defensive possession from the Gamecocks. They have great length, not only on the interior, but on the perimeter as well. And Henderson's quickness has given Beckers difficulty so far. We asked Don Staley keys for this game. She said we have to take care of the basketball and we need to contain Page. South Carolina has done both in the early going. Boston doesn't get the flip. Guess what? Another offensive rebound. Saxton. Beckers tips it. Henderson will let it go out, and it will stay with South Carolina. Rebecca, you mentioned Destiny Henderson's quickness, just that effort on the denial. No matter where Paige Beckers is going, she is low, she keeps her hips low and stays in front. It is very difficult to do. Great effort by Henderson. Here's Cook looking for another and finding it. Zaya Cook, three for three to begin this game. Shooting just 28% from the floor in the NCAA tournament. And UConn settle in. And that's a travel. Nelson Adota walks. We're going to step aside. South Carolina, a 13-2 lead. A little more than halfway into this first quarter. It's been all Gamecocks. South Carolina, a 13-2 first quarter lead over UConn in the national championship game. Let's take a look at our thrilling drives from tonight's game brought to you by Nissan. South Carolina all season long has made their living on the offensive glass. They do such a good job of getting there. Six offensive rebounds already. Pass it out, you get a wide open look for three and when you're in the paint and you miss your shot, you know you have a great chance of one of your bigs going to get it and getting a couple of easy points in the paint. So impressive so far. The physicality, the pursuit of the basketball. Great job by the Gamecocks. That was an issue for Connecticut in the first meeting between these teams. A South Carolina win back in November. All right, Rebecca, I mean, obviously, this is one of the calling cards of the Gamecocks, but what kind of adjustments, if any, can Connecticut make to try and at least make it not such a great disparity on the board? But you see, they're extending their defense a little bit. It's been difficult for them, too, because they haven't made shots. So South Carolina has been able to get out a little transition. Cook, a little too strong. Another offensive rebound for South Carolina. Here's Boston going one on one with Nelson Adota. Help comes. Looked like Boston traveled. Was not called. UConn bench wanted it. Shot clock inside of five. Henderson swivels, meets bodies, and it's Connecticut basketball. Avina Westbrook into the game for AZ Fudd for Connecticut. A little more size for the Huskies. Here's Williams. Needs help. Beckers. Evades after the overplay. Here's Nelson Adota. One-on-one -on -one with Boston. Nelson Adota gets it to go. That's a strong move from the senior. Early in that possession, Nelson Adota had Henderson switched on her, begging for the basketball, didn't get it. And then it was a much tougher finish when she had Aaliyah Boston on her, but she got it to fall. Nelson Adota, first team all Big East this season, spoke to us today about the growth that she's experienced as a person, as a part of this Connecticut program. Saxton gets it to wedge home. Victoria Saxton. 15-4, South Carolina. 
Here's Beckers finding some space finally, but can't hit. Knocked out of bounds by Edwards. South Carolina basketball. Hey, fans, don't forget to check out the Bird and Tarasi show presented by AT&T 5G over on ESPN2 featuring WNBA legends Sue Bird and Diana Tarasi as well as special guests. The Bird and Tarasi show presented by AT&T 5G currently on ESPN2. We have second spectrum on ESPNU. On the rail, ESPN Plus, a lot of things going on with yeah, the Mega have a lot of devices to watch this game. <laughs> Nika Mule into the game for Connecticut. Leticia Ami here in for South Carolina. She left warm ups momentarily earlier after taking a pass off the throat, was huddled over on the bench for a while. Eventually was good to go though. Here's Cook across her body and off the window. Zaya Cook with eight points in the first. She had that little extra time and lane to get the shot off because of Victoria Saxton's use of her body in the post. Saxton does not get nearly enough credit for her part she plays in South Carolina's success. Don Staley says Saxton is low maintenance, high performance. Connecticut nearly turns it over. Edwards finds Mule cutting for two. Nika Mule, the sophomore from Croatia. Gino Oriema has said that Nika, two seasons in a row, has changed our seasons once entering the starting lineup. Coming off the bench in this game, it started for a while while Connecticut was out without Paige Beckers, who missed 19 games. Cook will fire. Can't hit. Rebound. Guess who? Saxton had it. Becker's able to wrest it away. Without Aaliyah Boston on the floor, a little easier for Connecticut to get to the glass. Avina Westbrook storms in for two. <laughs> Connecticut finally putting together back-to-back -to -back buckets. Here's a here. The floater banks in Leticia Mihir with the touch. South Carolina takes out size, and they put in size. They have so much depth at that position. And Connecticut down one of their key bigs. Dorka Juhas has that pass from Mule too long for Beckers. Fourth turnover for Gino Oriema's squad. Leah Boston back into the game for South Carolina. Juhas fractured her wrist in that epic Elite Eight double overtime win against NC State. She is here with her teammates. And South Carolina getting this big early lead has allowed Dawn Staley to sub Aaliyah Boston a little earlier than she normally does in the first quarter. We leave reset into the game for South Carolina as well with Boston and me here, Beal and Henderson. Here's Boston. One on one with Nelson Adota. Here comes the double. Boston unable to finish but draws the foul. And Aaliyah Boston will shoot a pair. And the ball went for, into Boston at first. We saw Paige Beckers help off of the defender. Went back out, then back in, and Paige Beckers did not help the second time. And Leah Boston is going to score almost over almost any defender in women's college basketball if it's one-on-one. -on -one. You see the numbers in the tournament for Leah Boston. We were asking Dawn Staley. Is there any player she's ever seen who just totally dominates the offensive glass the way Boston does? She came up with a pretty great name, Yolanda Griffith. Yeah, one of the best to ever do it at the in the WNBA. Just long arms, relentless, different body types though. Yo is really stringy and lean, and Boston is just so darn powerful. A little full court pressure from South Carolina. Connecticut's already turned it over four times. Edwards finds Beckers, extra feed. How about Westbrook? Too strong, and a foul here is going to go against Nelson Adota, and that's going to be her second. Wow, tough call against Nelson Adota for foul number two. Uh, at the beginning of that, Nelson Adota thought she was going to get the call because Ami here had her arm in, but she, the second one was called, and Nelson Adota went over the back. Caroline Ducharme into the game for Nelson Adota. Now this is where Juhas, and not having her, plays a role as well. She would normally be that third post in rotation. 
So Westbrook Edwards, Beckers, Newell, and Ducharme on the floor for Connecticut. 12 second difference, game and shot clock. Cook gets it over to Boston. Boston rumbles in and finishes. What a gorgeous finish from Aaliyah Boston. Ducharme gets it over to Edwards. Edwards, no angle, steps out of bounds. Connecticut turns it over. As impressive as South Carolina's offense has been and their work on the offensive glass, how about on the defensive end of the floor, Ryan? Fewest points in a first quarter this season for Connecticut. South Carolina could not have scripted a better start to this game. What's Gino Oriema have to say about it? Holly Rowe will chat with the 11-time champion next. Coach Gino Oriema, offensive rebounding and second chance points have been an issue. What are you going to do to your squad to get them to do that a little bit better? Uh, it is what it is. Like we, um, we're either going to rebound better like we did the other night, uh, or it's going to get worse than this. And there's no other, there's no way around it. Um, you know, we said going into this game, the reason we won the other night is because we rebounded the ball. And tonight, uh, we're not even close to getting rebounds. And again, they're just overwhelming us right now. So we got to regroup and get back to playing a little bit of Connecticut basketball. Thank you, coach. Well, let's take a look at our first quarter stats brought to you by Geico. This is what Gino Oriema is talking about. I mean, South Carolina had 11 more field goal attempts thanks to that plus nine on the glass. And what do we see now? South Carolina's coming in with 6-7. Yeah. In addition to Aaliyah Boston, I mean, they can just bring size and more size at you. Cardoso is the number one transfer in the country. Last year's ACC Co-Defensive Player of the Year. And last year's ACC Freshman of the Year at Syracuse. Henderson, Aaliyah Boston, Cardoso, as, long, as well as Bree Hall. And Lily Grissett, the five for South Carolina. Westbrook trying to find Ducharme. She catches up with it, one-on-one -on -one with Boston. Now Edwards putting it on the deck, lost it. Connecticut is completely out of sorts. Six turnovers now for the Huskies. And part of that is their inability to get it back to Paige Beckers after she has passed the ball to initiate the offense. Cardoso facing up. Here's the freshman Hall cutting through, flipping up and off. And a whistle is called on the rebound against Connecticut when it looked like they finally were going to get a rebound. Here's a look from the target above the rim cam. Yep, it's a foul. Westbrook got on the face of Cardoso. A loose ball here. Henderson spun away from contact. Zips inside. Can't finish it. Another offensive rebound for South Carolina. You know, I am using a variety of combinations, trying to figure out if something can work. Henderson on a three. Asia Wilson, who led South Carolina to their first title in 2017, has been on her feet since tip. 12-0 in second chance points. Beckers has been guarded beautifully by Henderson. Beckers, they need it, and she gives them to it. One thing Don Staley said they wanted to do was force Paige Beckers left. They did that, she scored. Twenty-five to ten, South Carolina in front. Westbrook trying to front Boston. Hall will fire a three, no. Offensive rebound, Cardoso, and another putback. Leah Edwards is there, and she tried to keep Cardoso on her back and just couldn't because of the size. Nico Mule on the attack. 
Sets up Edwards, mid-range, got it. Rebecca, it almost looks at times as if some of the bigs of Connecticut are so worried about boxing out, they're forgetting to try and get the basketball. And also, when they're trying to get around to three-quarter to prevent the ball from going into the post, that already puts you at a disadvantage in terms of boxing out and your positioning. Henderson, you bet! Destiny Henderson is slinging arrows. Three for three from downtown. Here's Beckers racing inside across her body. Got it to go. Three Hall, no one guards her. Lays it up short. Guess what? More offensive boarding. Grissett, no. And finally, Connecticut comes up with it. 11 offensive rebounds for South Carolina. Beckers, the Minnesota kid, wheeling through traffic, will fire. Oh my goodness! What a highlight from Paige Beckers. The defense offensively at Connecticut, the last few possessions, she hasn't given it up. Because when she gives it up, she has such a hard time getting it back. 30 to 16, South Carolina in front. Beckers with six now. Attended high school just 10 miles away in Hopkins, Minnesota. Tie up here, Beckers on it. Possession arrow belongs with South Carolina. Paige Beckers with the ball in her hands can be a magician in here, just working, working. She's like, I'm not giving it up anymore. I'm just going to go where I need to go to get my shot off. Looked like you navigating your way to the snack table at halftime. <laughs> going to find my way there no matter what. <laughs> Beckers, the AP Player of the Year last season, Aaliyah Boston this season, first time ever in the NCAA tournament in women's college basketball history that two players of the year have faced each other. Happened once on the men's side when Tyler Hansborough and Blake Griffin went up against each other. And that's going to be number two on Avina Westbrook. Well, look at her. She's guarding Aaliyah Boston. Beal. That's a travel. And South Carolina turns it over. With the lineup South Carolina has on the floor and the lineup Connecticut has on the floor, Avina Westbrook at the four position has to guard Aaliyah Boston. Are there things to be taken advantage of on this end, though, for Connecticut as a result? With Westbrook at the four. Yeah, you can. Caroline Ducharme is the advantage at this end because Aaliyah Boston is guarding her, and she's a player who can face up and take you off the bounce. Seven turnovers now for Connecticut. Bree Beal got in there to knock it away. Her defensive performance against Haley Van Lith in the semifinals was absolutely suffocating. Here's Cardoso. Given space, looking for help. Henderson the pull-up. No offensive rebound, Cardoso. She puts it home. Davina Westbrook did her job boxing out, but Olivia Nelson Adota did not, and Cardoza made her pay. Nelson Adota gets free, waits for the body, and finishes. Remember, Nelson Adota and Westbrook both playing with two fouls. Aaliyah Boston has just three personal fouls this entire tournament. Look at her and Westbrook just battling inside. Now Nelson Adota has her. Here's Boston. Bodies in. That's going to be a charge as Nelson Adota takes the contact. Coming inside, West, uh, Nelson Adota just taking the charge. Connecticut worked on that a little bit in their shoot around today. You see Avina Westbrook going out of the game. She is flat out exhausted from the way she has been battling inside against players who are so much bigger than her. Aaliyah Edwards back in, so Connecticut back with their starting front court. Edwards and Nelson Adota. We have not seen much of AZ Fudd. Beckers trying to find space, got the whistle. And Paige Beckers is going to shoot two. But Paige Beckers, lucky to be on the floor in this game, Holly. Right, you saw that replay of her spinning, driving, cutting, and it's hard to believe that in December she had a significant knee surgery. She had a meniscus stitched up, and then she had her tibial plateau fracture plated and put screws in. This is a significant injury, and she has come back in fine fashion. She said it was her choice. 
She prayed about it, talked about it with her family, and she wanted to return. And so here she is working her magic on the court. What a tremendous transformation from Peg Becker's surgery in December. Nelson Adota, great effort for the offensive rebound off the Becker's missed free throw. And another chance here for Connecticut. Here's Page. One on one with Boston. Gets it back to Edwards. Edwards hooks it up and off. Loose ball. Edwards after it. Another chance for Connecticut. Beckers trying to take advantage of Cardoso. Can't hit the step back. Good opportunities there for the Huskies. And Ducharme called for the foul. South Carolina, a 13 point second quarter lead in the national championship game. Absolutely dominating on the glass and thus far on the scoreboard as well. South Carolina, a 32-19 second quarter lead. Let's check in with Drea. Well, Ryan, as I'm watching this game, I'm noticing if you see Olivia Nelson Adota is doubling on Aaliyah Boston, and it gives Camilla Cardoso the opportunity to get the offensive rebound. Just the presence of Boston being on the floor gives her teammates chances because she draws so much attention from the defense. Drea, you have to front her, or at least three-quarter front her, to prevent her from getting an easy touch and a deep touch and then score. But as soon as you do that and a shot goes up from somebody else, you're already at a detriment in terms of boxing her out and your positioning. And Rebecca, you know, when you're turned and South Carolina does such a good job at staying in your body, so then they turn and seal you to get the offensive rerun. Incredible stuff as Cook leaves it short. Guess what? Cardoso, another offensive rebound. Connecticut wanted to walk afterwards. Boston on the bench at the moment. The freshman, Sanaya Rivers, into the game. Number three recruit in the nation this season. Nice job by Edwards. Swallowing up Beal. Now, if you're Connecticut, hey, can you get it to single digits before the half? I think that has to be your goal. Decker's been a little more aggressive over the last few possessions. Here's Ducharme on the attack. Lays it in. Connecticut, a 13-7 sprint after falling behind 25-8. This early lead, though, for South Carolina has allowed Dawn Staley to really use her bench and give players like Boston more time to rest than she normally would. Ducharme comes up with a steal. Here's Beckers. Pull up three. Short. And out of bounds to South Carolina. Coming up in the degree halftime report with Elle Duncan, Carolyn Peck, and Nikki Fargus. Dawn's dominance dissected. How about that alliteration? That's very nice. Ooh. I love the monochromatic way our incredible trio went at halftime, too. You're talking about their outfits. Yeah, 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 that's right, with these incredible colors. Out of bounds off of South Carolina. This is South Carolina's small lineup with 6'5 and 6'3 in the post. And how about Connecticut's going to go to Amari DeBerry here who's played just three total minutes in the NCAA tournament. She's in, so Levin Nelson Adota doesn't pick up a third, and she's a big body who can mix it up and have five fouls to give. Number 15 recruit in the nation this season. Here's Beckers trying to work Beal. DeBerry not shy, fires it up too strong. You know, Oriema told us earlier in the year that DeBerry is one of the most skilled bigs he has ever had. Get some really nice moments so she got some run in their game against Georgia Tech. Here's a me here. Boston still on the bench for South Carolina. Cook can't hit. Opportunity here for Connecticut with Boston waiting to check in. Ducharme gets space. Can't hit the three. And Cook the rebound. Couple missed chances there for the Huskies. The chance is worth taking as you're trying to cut into this lead with Boston out of the game. Under 2.30 to go in the first half. Cook stops on a dime and throws it away. As South Carolina's gotten a little sloppy last few possessions. Aaliyah Boston's going to check back in and Ami here out for the Gamecocks. Put a security blanket to have Aaliyah Boston. I don't think you're Don Staley. You don't like the way things look. Put Aaliyah Boston back in the game. They will look better. Connecticut 0 for 4 from 3 thus far. We saw South Carolina keep Louisville off the three-point line as Westbrook can't get it to go. Nice effort by Edwards on the glass, and it's out of bounds off of Saxton. 
Destiny Henderson will check in for Cook. It is so important for Connecticut to have any success in this game, to be able to make those three-point shots, simply because they're going to have a lot fewer attempts than South Carolina. Oh, Ducharme, nice touch on the delivery from Edwards, and it's a single-digit deficit then. A 7-0 Connecticut run. Saxton facing up, kicking out. Rivers, the freshman, remains in for South Carolina. Beal, putting it on the deck, meets a body, knocked out of bounds. Last hit, Westbrook, six to shoot here for South Carolina. Caroline Ducharme is really good when she moves and cuts, and a beautiful pass from Olivia Nelson Adota. I'm sorry, from Aaliyah Edwards to get it into her. Ducharme had a stretch in the middle of the season where she was Connecticut's leading scorer over a 10-game stretch. Rivers is now one for 31 from three on the season. Yeah, not the right shot there for her. Westbrook races in and finishes. It's a 9-0 Connecticut run. Dawn Staley wants a timeout. The officials don't see it, and that's okay. Henderson lays it in. Similar thing happened with Connecticut at the end of their game against Stanford. Decker's off one leg, straight cash. Henderson looking to exchange buckets, can't finish, controlled by Connecticut, and they throw it out of bounds. Beckers and Westbrook, with no pressure, turn it over. Both teams have been able to get good things out in transition. Avina Westbrook trying to get in past Aaliyah Boston. That's hard to do. She can often block that from behind. And Paige Becker says, all right, you want to force me left? I can go that way, too. Beckers with nine in the second quarter. It's a seven-point game. Here's Saxton, putting it on the floor, lost the handle. Gets it to Henderson. 23 second difference, game and shot clock. Steady arms of Boston. Boston can't finish it, Boston after it. Boston able to get it back. A tie up and the possession arrow belongs with South Carolina, another offensive rebound. By the way, Westbrook tweaked her ankle on that turnover. So, trying to walk it off for Connecticut. 15 offensive rebounds for South Carolina now to Connecticut's two. And the Gamecocks overall a plus 18 on the glass in this first half. Rivers, no, but a whistle. Foul goes against Ducharme. That will be her second. Sny Rivers is really good and smooth off the dribble. Caroline Ducharme trying to get there. Contact with the body, sending Rivers to the free throw line. Rivers, the number three recruit in the nation. Hits the first free throw. Largest deficit Connecticut faced was 30 to 12. They've done good work here in the second quarter to come back in this game. Rivers. This is the second, that rebound secured by Ducharme, and Connecticut can hold for a final shot here at the end of the quarter. Big time first half from the backcourt of South Carolina, 11 points from Destiny Anderson, eight from Zaya Cook. Here's Mule getting it to Beckers, four seconds left in the half, and that's gonna be an offensive foul on DeBerry as Destiny Anderson took the contact. You have to be stationary when you're a big up top. You're trying to get your guard open, but you cannot do that. Great job by Hes Destiny Henderson trying to fight over. 3.3 remaining in the half. Ami here gets it off, and that'll do it for the first half. South Carolina built a lead as large as 18, but missed 12 of its final 13 shots. Connecticut. Cuts it to eight at the half. Destiny Anderson, though, three for three from downtown in this first half. Destiny Henderson came out like a senior on a mission, looking for her shot, draining her shot, playing with an incredible amount of confidence. In a moment her team needed it most, she was absolutely terrific.
We were talking with Dawn Staley about Destiny Anderson earlier today. Said, oh, you don't have to worry about her in these kind of games. Nothing rattles her. And the only reason she ever turns it over is because of fatigue. Big time first half from Destiny, who is with Holly. We had to wait for the blood to get cleaned off your leg. Pretty good gash on your knee. How are you feeling right now? I feel pretty good, pretty confident in my team. Um, we came out strong for the um, first half. We just got to um, take it in and um, just do the same thing for the second half. You, you hit three threes in that first half. How does that open the floor for Aaliyah Boston when you guys are deadly like that? I feel like it opened the floor for um, big time because, you know, they have to play out on the, on the guards, especially me because I'm going to shoot it. But um, it, just, it just opens up the lane for to um, attack the basket more. Thank you, Destiny. Thank you so much. Anderson with 11, South Carolina, an eight-point lead, seeking its second national championship, the number one team in the nation all season long. L. Duncan, Carolyn Peck, Nikki Fargus coming at you with the halftime. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One, South Carolina. A 35-27 lead over UConn as we get ready to start the third quarter. Welcoming you courtside again. Hey again, everybody. Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, South Carolina. Well, they did what they do on the glass. Just totally dominated in that first half. Yeah, what a display of offensive rebounding we saw by the South Carolina Gamecocks. 17 second chance points. You know as soon as the shot goes up, they're going to have multiple players going and attacking. Aaliyah Boston was one of them. They are in constant pursuit. Camilla Cardoso, the shot goes up. She's at the three-point line. Goes inside, able to get the basketball. That was the number one difference in the first half. And how about the way they contained Paige, Drea? Carolina, tr they tried to make life difficult on Paige Becker, staying in a stance. The versatility of their post players is extremely helpful. The ability to defend on the perimeter. Look, Aaliyah Boston, just keep an arm's length away. Make her give the ball up. Now you get the switch you wanted with Destiny Henderson back on Paige Becker's, making her give up the basketball. That's South Carolina's goal. Let's check out our game track brought to you by Adidas. You see UConn with the nine turnovers. Dawn Staley told us protecting the basketball was going to be number one key for South Carolina. Just four first half turnovers from the Gamecocks and just dominance on the offensive glass and second chance points as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, AZ Fudd is a developing story for UConn. She only played five minutes in the first half, and this is the best shooter on their team. There is a bug going through the UConn team. She was very sick last night, missed shoot around today. Juno Oriama said, we're going to start her the second half and see how she goes. Particularly important because Adina Westbrook noticeably limping coming out from the locker room with a right ankle twist. Sort of par for the course for the season. UConn has dealt with eight players, missed multiple games throughout the season. Paige Beckers missed 19. Fudd missed 11 with a foot injury. They've been the team of resilience. South Carolina, the team of unfinished business, as that's out of bounds, off of Beal, and another chance here for Connecticut. AZ Fudd, the number one recruit in the nation this season, a three-time Gatorade Player of the Year in D.C. Did not score in that first half. She's been terrific in the tournament. Gets a look here, can't hit. Out of bounds off of Nelson Adota and South Carolina basketball. Destiny Anderson had 11 points in that first half. The senior who certainly will be a part of the WNBA draft on April 11th. I would look for South Carolina early in the second half. Establish Aaliyah Boston. Yes, get her a touch early. One on one with Nelson Adota. Boston, that's too easy. If you don't bring help, she will gobble you up. That's too easy because she makes it look too easy. There's not a lot of players who can just get the ball, back you down, and score. An A. Smith Player of the Year, Aaliyah Boston. Seven points, five rebounds now for Boston, and it'll stay here with Connecticut. Leah Boston gets the basketball. Connecticut does not send help, and that's just when, as a post player, Nelson Adota is like, danger, danger, because there's not many people <laughs> who can do that alone. Beckers guarded tightly by Henderson. Edwards, two to shoot, going to have to put it up, lost the handle, Connecticut turns it over. 
tenth turnover of the game for Gino Oriema's team. Oriema 11-0 in national championship games. South Carolina 1-0. Don Staley said, hey, we have the same winning percentage. South Carolina be trying to become just the eighth school to win multiple national championships. Out of bounds off of Henderson. Hey, as we were talking about, don't forget, the 26th annual WNBA draft is upon us. Washington Mystics have the first pick. Will it be Ryan Howard, Nalissa Smith? Find out on the WNBA draft presented by State Farm April 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. And there is a wet spot on the floor that they are going to take care of. Where's but, the big broom that we had in you, Bridgeport? You know what? This looks like they may actually have to come back with some ointment because I think it's blood that's on the floor there. So, yeah, they're going to have to. People have gotten really good, though, about using those you know, different cleaning supplies over the last two years. So they're going to make sure it's nice. Yeah, there you go. It's sanitary? It's sanitary now. You know, Rebecca, Connecticut trailed by 18 in the second quarter. And so I'm sure our audience is wondering, well, what are the largest come from behind victories in the history of the national championship game? If Connecticut were to come back and win tonight, this would be the largest. Notre Dame came back to beat Mississippi State. That dramatic Arike Agumbawale run trailing by 15. Louisiana Tech did it to Auburn in 1988. Tonight, UConn trailed by 18. They had cut it to seven, had the basketball. Westbrook and Beckers turned it over then. South Carolina has increased it back to 10, but Huskies ball. Number one key for Connecticut. They're going to be to take care of the basketball on the offensive end and then get to the defensive glass. No secrets there. Here's Fudge. Guarded tightly by Cook. Williams has not scored yet. Giving it up. Six to shoot. Beckers trying to create with two to shoot. Beckers gets it off. Short. Loose ball. Cook after it. Here comes South Carolina. Zaya Cook gets denied by Beckers. Henderson able to save it. And another chance here for the Gamecocks. Here's Beal, guarded by Fudd. Loose ball, collected by Cook. Forces it up and gets the whistle against Williams as Zaya Cook will shoot two. What pursuit by Paige Becker as it looked like in the two-on-one. South Carolina was certainly going to score an easy bucket and Paige Beckers didn't allow it. Holly? Well, Zaya Cook had an interesting semifinal. She didn't play as much as she normally does. Coach Sean Staley went with the younger player, Sanaya Rivers, and we asked Coach today at shoot around, hey, did you have to address that with Zaya? You know, soothe her feelings, make her feel better, and she said, absolutely not. She just wants to win. So it seems very gratifying that Zaya Cook has come out and started this game off so well. Didn't pout, waited her turn, and is ready for the big moment. Man, is playing well. She struggled turning the basketball over in that semifinal game, but has come out here and taken good care of it. Played just 22 minutes in that win against Louisville. Here's Williams firing a three and can't hit it. Boston soars in for the rebound. Connecticut is now 0 for 7 from downtown. And that's going to be an offensive foul against Sexton. And that will be her first. That's got to be frustrating for Don Staley because you want to at least get a shot up. On Here's the rim. a look from the target above the rim cam. Because if you get a shot up, you know that Sexton at least can go get the offensive board. You see her there with the foul. She tells her team, you know, about half the time, if you miss the shot, it's okay because we're going to get the offensive board. Yeah, Dawn Staley joked with us earlier in the season. She said, I, I tell them, we just don't want turnovers. We don't mind missed shots. Missed shots are offensive rebounds yeah. for us. They rebound 47% of their misses. Here's Edwards, giving a world of space, sending through Williams. Bud, pull-up jumper, gets blocked by Saxton. Maisie Fudd unable to get anything going thus far. No points. No points for Williams as well. You know, Oriema has told us in his mind, those two and Beckers are getting 20 every night. Boston gets fouled. 
And Aaliyah Boston is going to shoot two. Victoria Saxton on one end gets the offensive foul call, but it's not just Aaliyah Boston who has the length. Saxton has length to block the shot as well. It was a great decision this end by Destiny Henderson. She got the ball back, waited, knew she wanted to get it into Boston, and then she delivered it perfectly. Aaliyah Boston, the three-time All-American, the Defensive Player of the Year and the Player of the Year this season. Her parents catching the action. Boston from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. What a star she is as Saxton comes up with the offensive rebound. Henderson zipping, reversing, and gets the whistle against Williams. More free throws for South Carolina after yet another offensive rebound. Every time a shot goes up, even if it's a free throw, they're pursuing the ball. Look at that by Saxon and then going and securing it for her team. Saxton has 20, had 26 offensive rebounds in the tournament entering this game. As a me here will come and grab Saxton. We've seen her add three more already tonight. Anderson hits the first. And you said in the first half, but the eye-popping offensive rebounds and stuff at this end for South Carolina. Their defense, their defense. Connecticut has not scored yet this quarter. And went into the half with a little momentum. Nika Mule into the game for Connecticut. Mule nearly turns it over, gets it back. Williams, the senior on the bench now, has not scored, has two fouls. Nelson Adona gives it up. Page looking for some space, but didn't take it. Great D here from South Carolina, and another Connecticut turnover. Beal able to save it. Here comes South Carolina. Don Staley calling out a play, directing traffic with Cook in Boston. Here's Henderson. Cook swivels inside and banks it in. South Carolina starting the third, much the same they started the first. Back door, Beckers gets loose for two, and those are the first points of the half for UConn. A 9-0 South Carolina run ends there. Yeah, their defense, South Carolina's defense, has been smothering. Their pursuit of any loose ball or rebound has been incredible. Lob inside. And me here couldn't handle it. Out of bounds to Connecticut. The men's national championship game is tomorrow night with coverage beginning at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com. What a classic last night between Duke and North Carolina. Kansas and UNC will have center stage tomorrow night. Tonight it's South Carolina and UConn, and the Gamecocks have just been incredible defensively again tonight. How about 46 straight games? where they have held opponents under their scoring average. Tonight, Connecticut has just 29 points more than midway through the third quarter. Yeah, South Carolina is stifling defensively. They've got great length, they've got great size, and the players who don't have quickness. They just make life so difficult for their opponent. Avina Westbrook into the game for Connecticut. We'll see how she does on that ankle she tweaked at the end of the first half. A little pressure applied by South Carolina. Westbrook directing traffic, gets it up the floor as Henderson comes up with a steal. Connecticut turns it over for a 12th time. Great decision in the last few possessions by South Carolina to extend that pressure. Cook bounces into Boston. Boston one-on-one -on -one with Nelson Adota. Leah Boston has it stripped by Beckers. Good dig from the UConn star. Down the floor, Mule has to peel back out. Nelson Adota, a terrific passing big. Dumps it into Westbrook. 
Goes up. Looks like she got hit. No call. And South Carolina controls it. Cook around the Boston screen. Short. Boston nearly another offensive rebound. And a foul is called against Beal. Now let's see, Rebecca, whether or not Westbrook had a case for a call on that last shot. Her defender is smaller than her, so she was posting her up. And Boston came over for help. Oh, she might have missed her. Yeah. Looked like the right no call. Mm -hmm. She came with a swipe but didn't hit anything. Yeah. <laughs> there was intent, but no contact. I don't think intent matters. It doesn't. I'm in foul. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Mule. Mule through traffic. Flips it out. Westbrook off on a three. Remember, Westbrook hit three big threes in the semifinal against Stanford. Dawn Staley not happy. Late whistle there on the glass against South Carolina. And it's the third on Bree Beal. And now Dawn Staley is going to send in the freshman Bree Hall. Oh, yeah, Beal gets Edwards right in the face. Mule traveled. That is 13 Connecticut turnovers. One of the things, you know, Ariama told us in order for his team to have success today is his backcourt that had to play equally as well as they did in the semifinal game. And Kristen Williams has struggled. AZ Fudd has not gotten a lot of run, but certainly not what he had hoped for so far in this game. Well, they both haven't scored. Oh, I think Amelia thought Victoria Saxton was in play. That's why you got to kneel at the scorer's bench. <laughs> Saxton ran to the scorer's table, and Amelia thought she had a wide-open teammate. Yeah, normally you go over and you kneel. She's getting over there, and yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. 14-point South Carolina lead. Connecticut scored just two points in this third. Here's Beckers. She might have to do it herself. Beckers bounces. Edwards able to finish. Connecticut trailed by as many as 18 in the second quarter. Had cut it down to seven. Trailed by eight at the half. South Carolina breaks the pressure. Boston, eight points, eight rebounds thus far. Cook looking to turn the corner. Hall winds up. Can't hit the three. Becker's the rebound. Ducharme, aggressive attack. Gets denied by Boston. The defensive player of the year. She can clean up so much because Ducharme got a step going to the rim. Boston right there to send it. Beckers creeps in, flips out, Ducharme, Penix on a three. The first of the evening for Connecticut after missing their first eight attempts. A 7-0 push here from the Huskies. Henderson. Cook will fire. No. Rebound kicked. Loose. Who's going to get it? It's Beckers and an opportunity here for Connecticut. Mule. Westbrook. A three. It is good. It's a 10-0 Connecticut run and a six-point game. Timeout South Carolina. Connecticut without a three made in the first half. Desperately needs them now. Caroline Ducharme hitting from the corner. Avina Westbrook hitting from the corner. Connecticut not willing to go down without a fight. Well, the Connecticut Huskies have creeped to within six after being down 18. That Westbrook triple bringing Connecticut to a six-point deficit, and yeah, Gamble Pavilion, they love it. Sold out in stores, Connecticut. 
A 10-0 Connecticut run. And this is a Connecticut team that has not had a traditional Connecticut season. They had their 239-game winning streak against unranked opponents snapped against Georgia Tech. Their 145-game conference winning streak snapped. They had five regular season losses, most since the 0405 season. Gino Oriema called it the most difficult season of his 37-year career at the helm. But through it all, they've been resilient. And Rebecca, they're showing that again tonight. Once down 18, it's now a six-point game. Yeah, so much of the season under undermanned because they had players out with COVID, players out with injuries. It's been one of their toughest years ever. Henderson, too strong, loose ball. Who's going to grab it? Saxton has it for South Carolina. A tie-up and the possession arrow. No, a travel is called instead. And it is Connecticut basketball. By the way, that foul on the inbound prior called on Edwards her second. Surprised on that possession by South Carolina to not see Aaliyah Boston get a paint touch. When Connecticut went on their 10-0 run in those three minutes, one paint touch for Aaliyah Boston. Just three points between the second and third quarter for the player of the year. Beckers goes back door, lost it. Henderson has it. And a foul from Beckers as bodies hit the floor. Not a wise one with South Carolina in the bonus and headed to the free throw line after the 14th Connecticut turnover. Lili Grissett will check in for South Carolina. Lili, grad student, playing in her 143rd career game at South Carolina, a school record. By the way, this is the closest South Carolina has seen this score since it was 7-2, with 7.39 left in the first quarter. They raced out of the gates. Henderson misses the first, the 71% free throw shooter. South Carolina not only really good getting to the offensive glass on field goals, they are also good getting to misses on free throws. Mom staying poised with Destiny at the line, who goes one for two. Seven point game. Connecticut not trying to get into a two for one. Westbrook. Step back jumper, off the mark. Boston got there for the board. Henderson, the Euro, and the finish! Destiny Henderson trying to nullify that graphic. Ducharme goes baseline. Connecticut can hold for one here. Lead back to nine. Westbrook, a three, no, missed it badly. Hall, a chance here, Hall heaves. Nearly got it to go. That'll do it for the third. South Carolina, a nine point lead, headed to the fourth. Destiny Henderson leading all scores with 16 has been spectacular. Her head coach, Dawn Staley, chats with Holly. That's coming up. Next. Here is a look at the WBCA Coaches Trophy presented by Invesco QQQ, which will be awarded to the national championship winning coach tonight. Will it be Dawn Staley, her team leading by nine after three? Here's Coach Staley with Holly Rowe. Coach Don Staley, your team is off to such a good start, but UConn went on a little bit of a run there. What concerns you the most about that stretch? Oh, bad shots. When we take bad shots, unexpected shots, we can't rebound the basketball, and they turn those bad shots or, or turnovers into transition easy buckets. Leah Boston went a while without touches in critical places. What do you have to do to get her more looks? I just got to get her the ball. We got to be more uh, premeditated in getting her the basketball. And we'll, we'll do that in the fourth quarter. She got to bring it on home. Best fit ever. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ali. Well, speaking of not getting Aaliyah Boston the basketball, let's check in with Andrea Carter.
Well, what Coach Staley said was perfect about being premeditated to get Aaliyah Boston the basketball. And this is what it should look like when Aaliyah Boston is one on one down low. The premeditation comes from stop that cut, the ball goes here. Instead, the cut comes through, the ball swings around instead of getting Aaliyah Boston a look. That's what premeditation and being intentional about going to your best player looks like. Drea. Boston only had four paint touches on 19 total possessions in that 13, th uh, third quarter. It needs to change. And South Carolina had seven turnovers in the third quarter and yet increased their lead by one more point from halftime. Nine point lead, fourth quarter of this national championship game. Here's the freshman Hall. Bodies into Edwards and that's gonna be a travel as South Carolina turns it over. They've gotten big time production from their guards tonight. Meanwhile, Connecticut is not. Kristen Williams and AZ Fudd have not scored in this game. They normally combine to average 27 points per game. Connecticut needs big fourth quarter from their guards in order to win this game. Here is Williams back on the floor. Edwards hits the jumper. How about the confidence in the face up? Last possession, Connecticut was in a zone defense, clogging up the middle. Here, looks like they're back to their man-to-man. -man. Rebeal, settle it outside. Camila Cardoso in the game, the 6-7 center. Here's Boston, spinning, floating, can't hit. Rebound, Connecticut. Down seven. Boston, eight points, nine rebounds. Three for eight from the floor. So impressive the way she could switch on to guards. Stood up Williams there. Here's Beckers looking for space. Edwards, little runner, won't go, and Boston has her 10th rebound. Yeah, you talked about Aaliyah Boston defensively. That's one of the things she can do that most players her size can't. She can switch out, prevent guards from going by her. It's a pro skill. Henderson. Zipping into the lane, cups it in. Destiny Henderson wants this title. 18 points tonight for Henderson. Ducharme gets swallowed up by Boston. Here comes Henderson, all alone. Two possessions in a row where the defense and presence of Aaliyah Boston have made a difference on the defensive end. Destiny Henderson continues to be the engine for South Carolina. And Aaliyah Boston's got her back, blocking, leading her out trying to ensure victory. Gino Oriema and Dawn Staley familiar with cutting down the net. Stay tuned for the championship net cutting ceremony brought to you by Werner Ladder coming up after the game on ESPN and the ESPN app. South Carolina an 11 point lead, 7.54 to go in the fourth quarter of the national championship game. Destiny Henderson with 20 points. She is bringing it tonight, Holly. Well, we talked to her today at practice, and I asked her what drives her, and she said, you know, I've just been through so much. I've lost loved ones. Her father was tragically killed a few years ago, and she said, it's just been really hard. I'm trying to make something of myself, make something and overcome what's happened to my family. And here tonight, my entire life will change if we're able to get a win. Is destiny prophetic in the naming of this young woman given her performance tonight? Feels like it thus far. Beckers gets it off. Just her third field goal attempt of the second half and just her tenth of the game. Boston able to secure it. Fudd back into the game for Connecticut. Battling illness in 11 minutes. Just 0 for 2 from the floor is Fudd. And keep in mind, everything Destiny Henderson is doing and excelling at on the offense of the floor, she's got the toughest defensive assignment, guarding Paige Beckers. Edwards goes through the back of Beal, and that's going to be number 3 on Aaliyah Edwards. South Carolina has been the number one team in the nation all season long. The 13th team 
to go wire to wire ranked as the number one in the AP poll. 11 of the previous 12 went on to win the national championship. The only one who didn't, UConn in 2018. Here's Beal spotting up. Can't hit the three. Sacks down the offensive glass and a foul. Westbrook was left alone, matched up on Saxton. And Victoria Saxton is going to win that matchup. Right now, UConn has a smaller lineup in. This is their scoring lineup. But it leaves them susceptible because of the lack of size for a player like Victoria Saxton to just get in there and haul in the board. 20th offensive rebound for South Carolina. Saxton hits the first. Swalen, Victoria's mother, but now good vibes on both free throws. It worked. It sure did. Mom loves it. 13 points, South Carolina lead. 5 0 boards for Saxton. And every time Connecticut has cut it to six, cut it to seven, the Gamecocks have had an answer to boost it right back up to double digits. Ducharme gets fouled by Henderson. And free throws here for Caroline Ducharme. Almost had two interlocked huddles there. Yeah, right. <laughs> and this will be just the third and fourth free throws of the game for Connecticut. Such a massive part of their win against Stanford. Shot 15 of 17 in the fourth. This free throw here. Sports Center coming up next. After UConn, South Carolina on ESPN and the ESPN app. Plenty of coverage from here. Bouchard missed them both. A 79% free throw shooter. South Carolina did this really well the first time these teams met when they got the lead, not shooting quickly, taking time off the clock. Henderson. Switched on Edwards. Henderson, not that time. Fudd flags it down. Here comes Connecticut. Trailing by 13. Westbrook. Deering, dishing, Ducharme lays it in. One thing we have seen, Connecticut has shown resilience throughout this season and this game. They've not been able to get over the hump, though, against an outstanding South Carolina team. Boston. Spins between two, can't float it in, got a foul. Ducharm is called for it. And Aaliyah Boston is going right back to the line, and that one was a little tough for Gino to stomach. Don Staley orchestrated that play, telling her team, go to the right side of the floor. That's where Aaliyah Boston was. They wanted to make sure she got a touch after some time had been taken off the clock. Eight points, 13 rebounds for Boston. And we were talking with Dawn Staley about Boston's season. And she said she feels like Boston really took off after the Bahamas. One of the games in the Bahamas, South Carolina played Buffalo. And Boston put up 23 points and 7 rebounds. Felt like she had a good game. And Dawn Staley said, I hurt her feelings a little bit. And I said, you weren't dominant. In order for us to get where we need to go, I don't care what the stats say. You need to be dominant every single night like that. Cook gives it back. Henderson. Ball fakes the three. Beal will line it up. Can't knock it down. Good box out that time from Edwards. UConn needs to make a push. Ducharme. Looked like she was fouled, and she was. We've seen Leah Boston block guards, and here's another one. Just comes in, doesn't even have to leave her feet. Let's her hands do all the work. Holly? We've told the story before, but for those of you new to our broadcast tonight, Aaliyah Boston grew up in the U.S. Virgin Islands on the island of St. Thomas. At a young age, 12 years old, her coach encouraged her if she wanted to be great, she had to leave the island. So her mom arranged for her to go to Massachusetts and live with their aunt there. Her and her sister Alexis spent most of their childhood there. She said it was hard. We missed family Christmases. 
birthdays. It was hard without my parents, but it has all been worth it. The sacrifice of the entire Boston family, Cleone, Al, Alexis. It has been a beautiful journey for this family to see their daughter on this stage tonight. You can imagine what it feels like for them to sit there and watch their daughter getting so close to her dream, the family's dream. Fourth foul on Ducharme as Connecticut turns it over for a 15th time off the inbound after Beal had picked up her fourth. Beal on the bench now. We're set into the game for South Carolina. Anderson will take and hit. Destiny Henderson with 22. Fudd yet to score in this game. Looking for help. Williams shovels Ducharme. No. Boston the rebound. South Carolina in total control. Henderson racing in for two more. Fudd gets an open look and knocks down the triple. Destiny Henderson a career high. 24 points tonight. As Fudd is finally on the board. Connecticut now just 3 for 13 from 3. Henderson. Giving it up. Boston. Dishing it back. Henderson. Not that time. And Connecticut make one more push. Trailing by 13. Beckers looking for space. She has not been able to find much all night. Beckers finds some here and knocks down the triple. Back-to-back -back threes from Connecticut and a timeout taken. Ten-point game with 3.18 to go in the fourth. Destiny Henderson, whether it's been in transition scoring, getting the handoff, stepping into it, has been an incredibly confident performer here in the biggest game of her life. And a South Carolina watch party, yeah. They certainly believe it's a night of destiny. Dawn Staley huddling her troops. Gino Oriema. 11-0 in championship games, has just one timeout remaining now. But back-to-back -back threes, and that's resuscitated things a little bit here for the Huskies. And you expect them now to pick up in some full-court pressure, trying to get traps, hands-on basketballs, anything. And then on the other end, or when it goes down into the quarter court, a lot of attention to Destiny Henderson, a lot of attention to Aaliyah Boston, and then trying to box out. That three from Beckers, was just her fourth field goal attempt of the second half. Had nine points in the second quarter, has 14 for the game. She is the only member of UConn in double figures. Cook and Henderson, the only Gamecocks in double figures. Here is the pressure. Boston breaks it easily. Henderson, wiggling away from the trap. Williams extends to Cook. Nelson Adota back in for Connecticut. South Carolina being patient here. And a foul is called against Nelson Adota. That will send South Carolina to the line. All postseason long, it was hard to see a path to victory for Connecticut if their guards did not play great. Williams and Fudd have had real difficulty tonight. And a lot of that, you have to credit South Carolina's defense. They have been smothering with their size and quickness, not only inside, but on the perimeter. Now, last year, Dawn Staley told us she had her most committed defensive team ever. So we said, how about this year? What superlative would you give? She said, even better. 26 now for Henderson, and it's back to 12. Gino Oriema saying, let's go. And a foul called against Boston. That'll be the third foul against South Carolina. So out of bounds here 
for the Huskies. Beckers in the corner, can't hit the three, loose ball, who's gonna have it? A whistle against Connecticut as Saxton hits the floor, doing the dirty work. And Gino Oriama in a very precarious situation when it comes to that undefeated championship game record. It's 22nd Final Four, 11-0 in championship games as Westbrook checks out. Saxton goes to the line. Beal and Ducharme, the only two with four fouls. Dawn Staley calls Victoria Saxton the mother hen. Said she's the adult in the room. Victoria said, she's been this way always. On the floor and off. Loves to take care of the rest of this team. She's done the little things again tonight. Does it here, although she's called for a foul. Looked like it might have just been a tie up. But Saxton picks up her second, and that will be the fourth team foul against South Carolina. Saxton, five rebounds on the day, all of them on the offensive end. And Westbrook, you could see, really laboring with that ankle in this second half. Pressure from South Carolina. Here's Ducharme. Ducharme finding Beckers. Knocked out of bounds by Saxton. It's smothering. Just, it's relentless. Yes, yeah, relentless and smothering. It's the, it's the best way to describe South Carolina's defense. 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 Beckers trying to get around Boston. Step back. Won't go. Foul on Mule. More free throws for South Carolina. South Carolina about to shoot its 21st to 22nd free throws of the game. Connecticut has shot just four. Heard Carolyn, Nikki, and Elle talk about how different things are for Connecticut when they get to the line 13 or more times this season. They have not been able to tonight. Well, South Carolina's been the team that's attacked. They've been the team that's pursued the basketball. Most loose balls have gone their way. That's also the team that ends up more at the free throw line. One for two on that trip, and still more pressure applied by South Carolina here. Deshaun jogs it across. Connecticut running out of time. Williams finds some space. Can't hit the jumper. The senior, Kristen Williams, still has not scored tonight. South Carolina fans getting on their feet. Two minutes away from their second national championship and a foul here on Ducharme. And she is done. That's number five. And a tough game for Connecticut. Caroline Ducharme was certainly a bright spot. Asia Wilson can certainly sense it. The WNBA MVP a couple seasons ago and the Final Four most outstanding player the last time the Gamecocks hoisted the national championship trophy. Baxton, this is the first. This is South Carolina team that has talked about unfinished business all season long. Felt like they were poised for a title two seasons ago. Didn't have a tournament thanks to COVID. Last year, came a missed layup and a missed put back away from advancing to the national championship game. This year they're trying to leave no doubt as Williams is finally on the board. 13 point game. Boston gives it back to Henderson. She flips it into traffic. Nelson Adota to the steal. Ewell eyes up. Williams wants it. Looking for some space to shoot a three. Connecticut taking a lot of time here now. They gotta go. 
Beckers dishes out. Williams fires. Can hit the three. Nelson Adota sets up Edwards. Off on a jumper. Boston the rebound. Foul Nelson Adota. And Aaliyah Boston will go to the line with more precious time coming off the clock. Only 1.15 to go now. 13 point lead with under two minutes to go. And South Carolina's defense is just as smothering as, as it was early in the game. Incredible effort, start to finish. South Carolina is a plus 23 on the glass. Boston, one free throw away from yet another double-double. Her 30th of the season. Mom and dad have seen a lot of it. Boston got them both. Edwards races in, misses the layup, another rebound for Boston. And it's just a matter of time now. Boston giving it up. Henderson looking for some icing. Knocked out of bounds by Fudd. It will stay with South Carolina. Dawn Staley on the brink of championship number two. Connecticut, who fought so hard all season. You know where Yama told us. There have been times in the Final Four in the national championship game where it's like a kid who knows their Christmas presents, knew it was coming. He said this year was so different. Unexpected victories. But South Carolina is going to be the one celebrating tonight as their starters come out. Thirty seconds to go. Russell, that's going to be a charge as Nika Mule, fitting of her tough style, still in there taking contact with 20 seconds to go. South Carolina bench begins to erupt. A wire-to-wire -wire victory tonight. It is not unfinished business any longer. South Carolina has captured its second national championship. Tears of triumph in 2022. From the moment that put back miss, Aaliyah Boston was on a mission. Mission complete for Sheen, Dawn Staley in South Carolina. This is a team that was dominant from the beginning of the season to the end. And in the national championship game, they were dominant from the beginning to the end. And Holly is standing by with Aaliyah. Nobody can understand the journey that it has taken you to be crowned champion here tonight. How do you describe the sacrifice and the work that has brought you to this very moment? Holly, it feels amazing and honestly I've been thinking about it since last season because everyone had a picture of me crying at the end of the Final Four and they played everywhere as if that was some type of... But today we're national champions and... I need tears, Holly! I need tears! So if you guys want to smile, here you go! And we're national champions! We'll save that smile.
Aaliyah. It was hard, though. This is a tough UConn team. How did you get out to such a great start in this game? I mean, we had our game plan ready to execute. We knew that we needed to apply so much defensive pressure, make it hard for Paige, um, and make someone else score. And I think we did that, and that helped our offense to run. It was a master class on the glass. How did the dominance inside really seal this win? We knew that. We've been dominant on the glass all season, and we couldn't change up, especially for this game. We knew it would come down to rebounding. All right, we'll remember this night, Aaliyah. No more tears. No except more for tears the... except for our national champions, baby! Aaliyah Boston, utter and complete dominance, wire to wire this season and tonight. As we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance, how about Destiny Henderson this evening? She saved her career high for the national championship game. 26 points on the day on the offensive end. Spectacular, using her speed, getting it out in transition, hitting three-point shots, but equally as impressive was what she did on the defensive end, making Paige Beckers work for everything she could get. Wow, she was terrific. And Destiny is with Holly. Destiny, not only are you holding the national championship trophy, but you did it with a career high. How did you get your offense working? My teammates trusted in me. Um, I feel like since day one, we've been putting in the hard work and waiting for this moment. And tonight, I just found open shots. You had a difficult defensive assignment tonight, guarding Gage Paige Beckers. How were you able to lock in and slow her down? Um, I know I had to use my speed to make sure I stay with her. Um, I think that's what we've been practicing all along, and the first time we played them, um, that really worked out well for us, so I knew to come into this game I had to bring the same momentum. You told me today you've had a tough upbringing, and it's an overcoming type of moment for you that tonight could change your life. How do you hope that manifests itself? I just stayed positive. Um, my teammates believed in me once again. We've been working so hard since day one, and it finally paid off all my hard work. All my focus, me trusting the process, me trusting Dawn. She just put me in a position just to be great, and today we, we national champions. I know you've got your own clothing line. The tagline seems perfect for this moment right now. What is it, Henny? Anything's possible, baby. Make sure y'all go shop. Clothing by HP.com. Yes, sir. Anything is possible. Thank you so much, Destiny. Thank you so much. I think Kevin Garnett is going to be getting something from Destiny Anderson off her clothing website. What a performance here tonight. And Dawn Staley's South Carolina Gamecocks become just the eighth school to have multiple national championships. A title in 2017 and now a title here in 2022. Well, last year, South Carolina came within a putback of being in the national championship game. Last year, tears of sadness and disbelief for Leah Boston. This year, tears of joy. South Carolina 64, UConn 49. The final stick around on ESPN for continued coverage of the Werner Ladder Neck Cutting Ceremony. Sports Center coming up next after the break.